Hey there, my name's Aaron Robbins and welcome to another fantastic Magica Voxel tutorial demonstration. Today we're gonna to talk about the brushes and the brush modes. So let's go ahead and create a box um, using the box brush and the attach mode. And I'm actually gonna explain what those are in just a second. Um, but we just, we just need a box here for explaining things. Let's start at the bottom with move. So move just moves. Up in the Z here in Magic of Voxel, Z is up in X and we see Y is the yellow one. So you can just move. Only important thing to note about that is that there is wrapping, which can be useful sometimes. Wrapping in all directions. So you can actually go through the ceiling here, all that kind of stuff. Um, and then the only other thing that you need to note is that if you have multiple, you know, sort of objects in your scene, it's going to move all of them. So it's not like detecting which model or which part of the model I clicked on and moving just that one. It's moving the whole kind of every object in the same thing. All right, let's zero that out, move on to the next brush, which is the face brush and the hardest and funnest one to explain. So let's get another box uh, going on here. If you use the face brush with nothing on here, it's actually just gonna fill the whole bottom of the model like that, which is fine. And erasing would work uh, the same way. So let's let's leave a couple in there and then demonstrate paint really quickly. Okay, so you got all that. I'm gonna create a box on top of that with this just wonderful color right here. Okay, so what the face tool does in this particular is the face has uh, three kind of properties. It has whether or not you want the operation to apply, be applied to similar color or similar geometry, which really is like level. Um, and whether or not you want the new voxels to added to have the same color as the ones you're touching or one from the color palette. And this is a tolerance setting that has to do with how close neighbor connections have to be. I will explain that by showing you. Okay, so right now that we just have this one color on this one level, the geometry or color setting does nothing. So if I attach with um, saying only pull up or only add voxels of the same color, does that. If I change it to on the same level, it does the exact same thing because we only have one color on one level. If I add a new color using box and we'll use paint and we'll put this color in here like that. Now this setting on face has um, some significance. If it is set to color and we have this set to attach, it's only going to pull the blue out now because even though this yellowish color and the blue are on the same level or the same geometry, um, they are not of the same color. So it's only gonna pull that one out. If I start on the yellow one, it's only gonna pull that one out. If I change this setting to geometry, now it's saying it's disregarding color and saying they all are on the same depth or level, so I'm gonna pull them all out. So let's go ahead and switch it back to color to illustrate the next point, which is when you add new voxels, you can say, hey, I would like you to add the color that's currently there, or I'd like you to add a new color from the palette. So surface means when I click on this one, it's gonna just use the color that's there. It's just gonna use the color that's there. If I change it to palette or PA and pick a new color, it's gonna add those there. Or if I do it on the outside ring, it's more noticeable there. So that's what surface or palette color does. The last one I have to do some drawing. So I'm gonna to go to voxel paint, change this back to a cube at one, and we're gonna draw all around here like this. So this is a tolerance setting. And if we go to select attach, um, and we have it on four, it's going to extrude some of them, but not all of them, because they weren't, it wasn't tolerant enough of their distance, or they weren't connected enough. There's only two settings here at the moment, four, and then we'll switch it to eight, and now it'll grab all of them and uh, pull them all up like that. So that's what the three settings on face do. Let's go ahead and zero out our scene and move on to the voxel brush, which just adds voxels or erases voxels like a pencil, very much like a pencil tool, but it has one really fun setting, and that is the Vox properties down here, which it can be a cube, which you could set to something like 12, and then you could set to something like six, and then change it to erase and carve out some things like that. Or you can change it to sphere and set it to something big like 36 and attach and draw with it like that, make some mountainy type things. And you could actually set it to erase and something maybe a little smaller and carve out using that. And you can also paint using um, all of these, um, all of these different settings you can paint with. So that's how the voxel brush works there. Let's move on to the line brush and we're gonna stick with what we have. The line brush only has two different um, sort of settings, project and straight. What straight does is it tries to draw a line 
from one point to the other without taking into account the topology that it's going over. So if I draw this one over here, it tried to draw a line from this level to this level without taking into account um, this sort of gap in these bends here. So if we found one that had the same um, height, um, which should be pretty easy to do, we'll just go ahead and create that really quickly. Change this back to cube and back to uh, one and we need uh, two levels here. Okay, so we'll go ahead and select the line brush, some new color, and I'll draw from here to here. So it did not take into account this gap in top topology here. It just drew a point from this to this. If you select it uh, to project, then it's going to take into account that topology. Now it didn't make a straight line, it sort of dipped down into the valley here, and you can see that probably better demonstrated across this gap. Um, where it kind of went down and around. So that will actually go on the inside there versus just going straight out. So that's the line tool. Um, let's go ahead and zero this out and how it works. Next one is the circle tool and it has just two settings, odd or even, so you can draw circles with it. And the odd or even has to do with how many of voxels are on the outside um, perimeter edge here. So when it's odd, there is an odd number, you can count those and when it's even, there is an even number. And you can erase with the circle tool as well, which is even more fun. I almost made Pac-Man, you saw it, it almost happened. Um, so that's a circle tool and you can paint with it as well. All of them you can paint with and all that kind of stuff like that. How long was that loft command selected or that access command? The last brush is the pattern brush and I'm gonna try not to mess up the explanation of that, but the important thing to note about the pattern brush is it's always in attach mode. It's never in erase, paint, or move mode. Um, Magic Voxel has these sort of test ones that you can, uh, they're not test ones, these are patterns you can put into your scene. Um, there you go, you can see I'm on paint mode, doesn't matter, I'm on erase mode, it doesn't erase, it's just attach mode for patterns. So it's like a stamp brush, um, really. You don't you don't need to put your models in, in this folder either. You can save them to any folder you want and just hit load. And then when you select and hit open, that now is your active pattern brush. Um, and that's how it works. So you can't use patterns to deform objects or erase objects, only to place in the scene. And why it works really good as a stamp brush. And the only one thing I'll say about that is that when you are making small models as patterns and then saving them off with the idea that you're gonna come in and actually build your scene letter later, it's very helpful to save off your own palette. So you would build up a palette of colors here and then save those off as, you know, whatever your project's named palette. Because when you are on a different palette and you select a pattern to bring in, it takes the colors from the current palette that is selected. It's not like it remembers what colors were attached to it when you made the pattern. It's using the slots that were assigned to it as it was made. So it's really helpful if you actually load in a palette here or you develop a palette for this particular scene. And then when you go to use these patterns, um, you load in that same palette so that you get the same colored patterns, unless you're you know, wanting to recolor them or something like that. So there you go, that should cover all the tools and all the modes. Uh, if you enjoyed this video or even mildly found it fascinating, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. We got more stuff coming up really soon. Um, thanks again, no, just thanks for watching. I always say thanks again, but I've never said thanks. I should start.